Now, what if I said it's possible to do a stinger transition on a regular A10 Mini with no external hardware, just out of the box, just like this? Well, it's possible. I just did it. So, welcome to the channel. I just want to do a quick tutorial on how this was achieved. I was thinking about the other day going, a, st a stinger is essentially a bunch of steel frames, and there are steel frames in the A10 Mini. So this might be possible. And after a bit of fiddling, and it is possible. So let me show you how that was done. So first things first, I downloaded a, a random uh, sting animation. Um, it is just a free one I found online. And I exported this as a bunch of uh, still frames, TIFF frames with alpha key below it. So as you can see, you can see the gray behind, which is a transparent layer, being that when you put it on top of a key, it'll go straight through. Now, I'm trying to figure out a way of actually making this the uh, a shorter animation, but, so this one is 27 frames long. Now, with only 20 still frames in the actual A10 Mini itself, you are quite limited in terms of speed, but, it's not impossible. So what I've done is I've got those still images and one by one, I just drag them into the, the media pool here. So I've got six, uh, 15 of them. Um, now you could obviously make it up to 20 if you wanted to, but I've still got my holding slide there. And yeah, so if, if you say you have one holding slide and one for the sting, you can have a 19 frame transition. It's not a lot, but it's enough to do the job. So what I did, drop, drag them both in, I just skipped every second frame. So I went zero, two, four, five, oh, sorry, six, etc. So I dragged them all in, and now I have a bunch of images in the media pool. Now, the way that we actually went about making this transition is using the macros built into the ATEM Mini itself, or any of the ATEMs. Actually, this should be possible in any ATEM thinking about it. So all I did, so I just created a Sting 2. Now, it's a long, fun, tedious process of, I go drag into Media Player 1 or 2, depending on your preference. So let's go Media Player 1. Drag image number 1, or image number 0. Add a pause, add one frame, go. And repeat. Drag in, add a pause, go. Now we keep doing this until we reach a point where the animation, now I'm actually getting covered up as I'm doing this. Uh, let me turn that off so we can see what's happening. So we get to a point where the animation is actually covering up the entire frame. So I'm just gonna skip past because I've already done it. So we would drag in the last frame as part of the recording. And now at this point, I'm going to put in a cut transition into the macro. So I'm just going to hit cut. So that's going to cut there. Uh, I've done it twice, but that should be okay as I'm recording on the A10 while I'm actually doing this. And then I go through all the rest of them and off we go. Now, a little trick could be if you make your own transition is you could do the animate into a full screen. So say it animates into a full screen logo. So it goes zoom. And then at that logo point, you could have a full screen uh, of a second duration if you want the sting to be longer. the So you could have say 10 frames of animate into a full screen logo, hold that for a second, and then another nine frames going out or another 10 frames going out. So that's a little trick to get a longer sting out of, this, uh, out of these only 20 uh, media player pools. Um, so I'm just gonna hit cancel there. Now, if you wanted to, okay, so I said no external things. You can do this with, just with the macro itself. So what I've done is that I've told it to basically animate in, it's animating in, and then it's gonna cut to whatever's on the preview bus. Now, depending on how your ATM set up, you could set up a ready the, the camera or the, or the video that you wanna uh, select, put that on preview and then fire the animation. So that will go full screen, cut, and then come out again. Uh, 
Um, what I have done is because I'm running companion on some stream decks below is I have, once I find that, so I've got a bunch of buttons here. So what I've done is I've made a sting to MP2. So I hit, uh, do an action of run macro. So run the macro three, which is the sting. And then I'm also going to put the camera that I want in preview. So the idea being that I can have just one macro, obviously there's 99 macros you can use, so you can make as many as you want, but you can have one macro and then just have different buttons to where you want to sting to. So I can go sting to super source, which I'm already on, uh, sting to the animation. I have turned off the upstream key. So speaking of upstream key, so this is how I actually uh, put it on the image itself. Now I put it on an uh, upstream key three. Uh, it can be any upstream key at this point. So under palettes of an upstream key three, I've just done a Luma key and I've done media player one as the fill source and media player one as the key source. So it's going to grab the, it's going to grab the alpha from the image itself. So long as that image has transparency built in. So you have that, you can just do a pre-multiply key or if the key is not quite right, you can adjust the key here. And now when I do a sting, it plays just over the top. So, yeah, that was a little quick one, but I hope that helps. Um, it was just something I was thinking about. I'm like, this has got to be possible, and it is. It turns out the media player can actually transition between each frame fast enough for this to work. So, yeah, I'm keen to see what you guys come up with and actually making these animations. Um, I just downloaded something quick and easy just to do a proof of concept, but I hope this was helpful, and I hope to see you on the next one. Thanks so much.